my friends. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I'm doing great. Today we are departing Florida. It was just a short little jaunt into Florida because we have to be in Mississippi in a couple of days for an event. So we're heading off today. We're shooting for Monroeville, Alabama when I woke up. We were having rainstorms and it just stopped for a little bit. So hopefully the weather will be kind to us. Days with Jordan the Lion, your old pal Jaw. It begins right now. Don't worry, he's here in his normal position. There's that rain. Kind of cool to see these old murals as I'm passing through the small towns. This is in Baker. And now we're enjoying a nice peaceful drive through the Blackwater River Forest. I think that's what it's called. Black River, Blackwater State Park, something like that. Beautiful. Kind of feel like I'm munsoned out here in the middle of nowhere. I'm actually really excited to get to this town. There's so much that I've heard about and it's connected to, well, obviously if you know anything, I haven't let on yet, but we are going to see the town that To Kill a Mockingbird was based off of and Harper Lee is buried there. Here's our welcome to Sweet Home Alabama sign. Now we're passing through a town called Bruton, Bruton, Alabama, home of country music legends William Lee Golden of the Oak Ridge Boys and Hank Lachlan. Elvira. I remember when I was in high school, Bob Dole came through our town doing a uh, campaign and brought the Oak Ridge Boys with him and they sang that song. My heart's on fire. We have found it. I say we found it because I've heard before someone say Monroeville is only a place you go to if you're actually looking for it. Now let's see if we can find the grave of the great author. Just behind me I found the Lee family grave and that's very important because this book, To Kill a Mockingbird, the Pulitzer Prize winning book, was actually based off of her life. See right there is the Lee headstone. And then right in front of us is Amasa Coleman Lee and Francis Finch Lee. Her older sister, Alice Finch Lee. And over here, Nell Harper Lee, the author. Now her father was who she based Atticus Finch off of. And she got the name from her mother. Her mother's maiden name was Finch. So thus Atticus Finch was born. Now she grew up in this town and the local courthouse here was what they used for the movie. When they did the Gregory Peck movie, which he won the Academy Award Best Actor for, they actually recreated the courthouse here in town because her father used to try law there. Her sister ended up taking over the practice and was basically the female Atticus Finch, people would say. And Nell Harper Lee herself would originally, when she went to college, have interest in being a writer and being a lawyer. And she ended up working for the college newspaper when she went to the University of Alabama, ended up becoming the editor of it, and basically told her family she didn't want to do law anymore. So she ended up eventually going off to Oxford and leaving there and then moving to New York and started meeting people and writing there and had a job working for Eastern Airlines. And in the mid 50s, one of her classmates and best friends, one of her neighbors from this town, was making his name as an author himself. When she knew him, his name was 
Truman Persons, but he would be known as Truman Capote. Now when she reconnected with Truman Capote and he was writing for the New Yorker and he was doing a story on what would eventually become um, In Cold Blood. And so she started helping him do the research for that and at the same time she had made some friends, a composer who he and his wife liked her and thought that she had a lot of potential and they agreed to basically pay for her living expenses for a year so she could work on her first book, to which she did. And she submitted that book, but the editor told her you need to change it, you need to put the, the setting of the main characters as children, and she ended up turning that book into To Kill a Mockingbird. And it was actually two years after she first submitted her first book in 1957, in 1959 that book would be made. In 1960, she would win the Pulitzer Prize, and then 1962, they would film the movie with Gregory Peck. Harper Lee prided herself on being a writer of small town America, what she said was quickly going away. And they didn't film the movie in this town, even though they recreated everything basically to, to be the town, because by the time the 60s had come around and they were gonna film, the production crew came and looked at it and decided that the town was a little too modern for the 1930s setting that they needed it to be. But Harper Lee did go, even though she's a, or was a massive recluse, um, did end up going out to the filming. And Gregory Peck told a great story about how he said he could remember filming the first scene. And it was when he was coming home from work and his kids are coming out to greet him with his briefcase and everything. And he says, he got done filming it and then looks over and he can see Harper behind a camera and it looks like she's got tears rolling down her eyes. And he walks over and he said, this must be incredibly moving for you. You know, I, I can tell that you're crying. And she said, oh, Gregory, you have a pot belly just like my father. Gregory Peck actually said this was one of, if not his favorite part to play and favorite thing to work on because he said everything was so easy. He could easily identify with the characters. See that he himself grew up in a small town. His father wasn't the lawyer in town, but he was the town druggist. And he said there was only one of those in every town. So he said he grew up in that time where you played with rolling around in a tire and you played with junk that you found. You know, this was during the depression. They didn't have toys that you bought in stores. So he said he could very easily identify with the the whole book and the production, everything. Now what's interesting is that Harper would basically, after New York, come back and live here in Monroeville for the rest of her days. She was so close to her sister that her sister took care of all of her business and was her lawyer, did all of her finances and everything, and Harper lived here, but was extremely shy about talking about her book. In fact, they said if you wanted to get rid of her that was the way you did it like if you if you wanted to make her feel uncomfortable and make her stop talking you brought up to kill a mockingbird she just did not like to be acknowledged for that in fact she sued the museum here in town or her estate did on her behalf in town because they felt like they were selling merchandise related to to kill a mockingbird making money off of her now right before she died there was a little bit of controversy because that early version of To Kill a Mockingbird that I mentioned that she had written in 1957 was called Go Set a Watchman. And she agreed six months before her death for it to be, or at least six months before her death, it was released. And it was a, a drastically different version of To Kill a Mockingbird. It took place later on in Scout's life. And, and Harper Lee was Scout. That's who she based off of was her. She was a tomboy and everything. But Atticus Finch, her father, was portrayed as somewhat of a racist and he, he was a uh, drunk and had connections with the KKK. And so a lot of people didn't like this. A lot of people actually, you know, caused a, a major fuss and wanted the, the police and everybody to go make sure that Harper Lee was okay and that she had actually given her okay for this to be released because they just thought it made no sense that people that had you know, name their kids after Atticus Finch now had a completely different character that that name represented. And, uh, and she said, no, I wanted it out there. And I, you know, my personal feeling when you, when you know that she released it right before her death, it's almost like, almost like she knew her end was coming soon and 
She had lived her whole life with only just that one book being out there. That's all she ever released. So she had the fame for that. I think she was just probably curious as to what people would have thought of the first version. In fact, when it went on sale, it had a record number of pre-sales. So I wanna go see that courthouse that they made the set based off of. Check that out. And then I wanna go out to where her house was and where Truman Capote's house was and talk a little bit more about their relationship. It's kind of a cool mural with the MGM record on there. Here's our courthouse. I believe it's a museum now. It's kind of interesting is every year they, they do the play of To Kill a Mockingbird and they do part of it in here, of course, because of the courthouse. And um, for years it's brought hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of tourism here. But Harper Lee really didn't like that that much. She really, like I said, she saw this as her home and really didn't like that she had made it such a connection because when people would come to the town, they would look for her and she didn't want to be found. In fact, she won an award. I remember Annette Benning telling this story, um, the actress, that Harper Lee had been given an award by the Los Angeles Library Association. This is telling about uh, reading here, the courthouse, sculptures right behind this depicting the Depression era children reading To Kill a Mockingbird. See right here. And it's basically the three of them from the, from the movie. Scout reading, Jim and Dill. So Annette Benning said when, basically that that award was being given to Harper Lee and it was, uh, Gregory Peck's family was very involved with that foundation. So Harper Lee didn't like planes, so she took a train from Monroeville all the way to Los Angeles, bought her tuxedo out of a catalog, and came to the event. And I just noticed on here it says because of Monroeville's connection to Harper Lee, Truman Capote, Cynthia Tucker, Mark Childress, and other respected writers in 1997, the Alabama legislature designated Monroeville, Monroe County as the literary capital of Alabama. Now they say that Harper Lee's father was who Atticus Finch was based off of, but her mother, that little hat and glasses, her mother suffered from some sort of mental illness and never really left the house. I almost wonder if that's what inspired her for Boo Radley. Home of the world's most famous courtroom. All right, $5 admission. We're going to the second floor where the courtroom is. Just like in the movie when the kids decide they want to come watch the trial those days. They're standing outside the doors. Pack. There's a photo from the movie. And when the kids are looking in through the doors, they boost up Gil or Dill. Wow. Wow. Seriously, almost makes my heart skip a beat. I remember having to read this in, I believe it was high school or junior high, and we watched the movie as well. So, I've seen the movie many times. Right over here would have been where Gregory Peck and Mr. Robinson would have been. The jury, the judge would have been right up there when Mr. Robinson was being examined. He would have been right there in that seat. Poor guy. This is, if you don't remember, if you didn't ever read it or see it, it's a story of racism in the South and it's about this 
black man being accused of raping a white woman. And, you know, just most of the people in town can't believe that Atticus would defend a black man over a white man's accusations because his accuser, basically what has happened that we find out is that the daughter here has kind of forced herself on Mr. Robinson and when the father came home and saw through the window something going on, that's what she told him that, that he was forcing himself when in reality he wasn't. But while we have this scene, the kids are right here, right up in that section, tucked down beneath the rail there and looking out through the spaces in between. Of course, when the jury comes back with their deliberation when it should have been a very easy case. They find him guilty. Jury Foreman on the set would have delivered that verdict right there. And Mr. Robinson is taken off to jail. And Atticus is telling him, Gregory Peck is telling him, don't worry, we ex I, told, I told your wife we expected to lose this one. Our chances are very good in the appeal, better than good. And uh, we find out later, after he was taken out of here, they claimed that he had tried to run and that they had to shoot him. I would love to see this play inside this building. They said when they tour the play, with the cast here, that they, uh, they often select the people to be the jury members from the crowd so that they can feel what it feels like to be in a jury that finds an innocent man guilty. I don't know if you're allowed up there or not where the kids were, but that was, you know, all the Seating up in the balcony was, of course, all the African-American seating. Could not integrate. And then eventually, our accuser here attacks the kids, and that's when Boo Radley comes to their rescue. I just want to see what it feels like to sit in the Atticus Finch chair. So you can probably imagine why so many people were upset with the way Atticus Finch is in the, the first version of the book that Harper Lee eventually released before her death because a lot of people saw Atticus in this book as one of the, the white lawyers in history that helped end the segregation. We're sitting in the witness stand. Right there is where the kids would have been. This says this room was used as a model for the trial scene in the film To Kill a Mockingbird. The set was designed by Henry Bumstead Universal Studios, signed Nell Harper Lee. That's the handwritten right down here in the corner. Looks like we can go upstairs. Yeah, right there they would have been watching. What a thrill to be here, really. It's an amazingly powerful book and movie.
There's Gregory Peck walking around Monroeville when he came here to visit with Nell Harper Lee. And this is them walking through town together. Lifelong friends after this. Almost never gave interviews. Very, very rarely. And there she is right up there in the same spot that we were just in. Almost makes you wonder if that's why they did it for the movie because that's where when she used to come, maybe she used to sit up there and watch from there. She said, my father is a lawyer, so I grew up in this room and mostly I watched him from, yep, well, there we go. Good thing I read it. <laughs> and that was her father. She said, one of the few men I've known who has genuine humility and it lends him a natural dignity. He has absolutely no ego drive. And so he is the one of the most beloved men in this part of the state. Here they even show where the house was. So if you look where the school was right there, the Falk House and the Lee House were right there. Falk House was uh, Truman Capote's family. His parents basically abandoned him, so he grew up with family members. So here's the Falk family scrapbook. And there's a young Truman Capote in these center two pictures. There's a picture of Truman Capote wearing his Greek sailor cap that is right there in front of it. There's the cap. There he is in two pictures wearing it. And this was Truman Capote's typewriter that he used in the fall and winter of 1944 when he came to Monroeville to work on Summer Crossing. So one of the reasons that Harper used to come watch her dad a lot was because they only lived two blocks away. So let's go see the houses that Harper Lee grew up in and where Truman Capote lived. All right, Truman's glasses. We're done here at the courthouse. Right here in this park, right across from the courthouse we were in where this fountain is, they have a great mural to, to kill a mockingbird. See the kids over here hiding behind the tree. I did end up buying a couple of postcards for future Patreons. Pretty cool. So as we saw on that map picture, we saw that Truman Capote's house was to the right of Harper Lee's. So this is the former, what's left of the former grounds of the Truman Capote house. It says, on this site stood the home of the Falk family of Monroeville. Relatives of the writer Truman Capote. Capote himself lived in this home between 1927 and 1933, and for several years spent his summers here. Two of the Falk sisters operate a highly successful millinery shop located on the town square. The third sister, affectionately known as Souk, was the inspiration for the characters in The Glass Harp, The Thanksgiving Visitor, and A Christmas Memory. The original structure on the site burned to the ground in 1940 and the second home was demolished in 1988. Monroeville remained important to Capote throughout his life and he returned to the area many times in the years before his death to visit surviving relatives. And then they have a quote from his book or from his writing of Thanksgiving Visitor. It says, I won't be here forever, buddy, nor will you. The Lord willing, you'll be here long after I've gone. And as long as you remember me, then we'll always be together. So, all that remains of the structure that was once here are these ruins. So then, like I said, that means next door where that ice cream place is would have been Harper Lee's house. So right here where Mel's Dairy Dream is. Would have been Harper Lee's childhood home. Boy, the area sure has changed since then. From the way it's depicted in the movie and the times of the 30s. 
So I mentioned there was more to the story about Truman and Harper. I mentioned that Truman started working on the article about what would eventually, years later, become In Cold Blood. Now, for all those years, until 1966, when he would actually release the book, he was doing research and she was doing it with him. She was traveling, interviewing people in Kansas, uh, involved in knowing the people that were murdered, asking questions, and he was you know, somewhat different, came off a little bit pretentious, and so she had better luck talking to people and getting stories out of them, did a lot of the research. In fact, when the killers were captured, they went together and interviewed them and the two killers when they were sentenced to death even invited Harper Lee to come to the execution and so she was just really hurt that when the book came out she was thanked but that was it she wasn't acknowledged as being a collaborator or anything it was he dedicated the book to his uh, longtime lover and Harper Lee but she felt like she deserved more acknowledgement than that and even though they were friends for the rest of their life that did upset her quite a bit Well, my friends, I think that's going to do it for us for today. I hope you enjoyed our stop here in Monroeville, Alabama today. I really did. I'm so glad that we did this. This was a really cool piece of history to get to see. Come back and see me next time. If this is your first time watching, please subscribe. Please hit the notification bell. And until next time, have a great night and goodbye.